Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Gizmo Joe. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Blackview S6. I purchased the Blackview S6 for 100 US dollars from GearBest.com. I'll leave a link in the description for those of you who are interested in picking one up. Blackview has made a name for themselves by consistently releasing decent handsets for those on a budget. The S6 seeks to combine the feel of a premium device with an affordable price point by including a few design flourishes normally found in more expensive phones. Does Blackview deliver? Let's find out. The Blackview S6 runs on a quad-core MediaTek 6737 chipset at 1.3 GHz with 2 GB of RAM and 16 GB of onboard storage. It runs Android 7.0 with Google Apps pre-installed. The S6 is powered by a hefty 4180mAh non-removable battery. The first thing that I noticed when I took the S6 out of the box was how heavy it is. It's well over 200 grams. This comes from the fact that the frame of the device is made of metal, giving the impression that the phone is more expensive than its modest price tag. The weight does make the phone feel solid, like it could take a few bumps and drops without concern. I should mention here that the back of the phone is plastic, however it does feature a decorative embossment with a fine grain-like texture. The front of the S6 houses the selfie shooter, speaker grill, and LED notification light. There are no physical navigation buttons, as the S6 relies on software buttons instead. Flipping the device over, you'll find an 8 megapixel and 0.3 megapixel dual lens rear shooter, an LED flash, fingerprint scanner, and a single mono speaker. At the top of the device, you'll find a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a micro USB charging port. Personally, I prefer the charging ports to be at the bottom of the device, but this is a small complaint. The right side of the device has the volume rocker and power button, which are also metal. The left side of the device doesn't have anything. And finally, at the bottom, you'll find what looks like two speaker grills. However, these are purely cosmetic. Covering these holes does not augment the sound in any way, as all sound comes from the speaker on the back. You can remove the plastic back cover by pulling up on the notch found on the bottom right of the device. Here you will find the non-removable battery, two SIM card slots, and a dedicated micro SD card slot capable of accepting cards up to 128 GB. The Blackview S6 sports a 5.7 inch LCD panel in an 18 by 9 aspect ratio with a 720 by 1440 resolution. During everyday use, the screen was crisp and boasted decent contrast. I found that the viewing angles were quite good and that the screen was bright enough to be used in direct sunlight. You'll notice that the corners of the display are rounded. However, this is not because the screen itself is rounded. The rounded edges are purely a result of the custom theme pre-installed on the device. If you were to look hard enough during operation, you can actually see that the display has normal sharp edges. This is most noticeable during boot up. Overall, I was pretty happy with the screen, however, what really bugs me is the fact that two black bars appear on both sides of the screen when watching YouTube in landscape mode. This isn't a problem exclusive to the S6, but rather an issue that all phones with the 18x9 aspect ratio have. There are workarounds for this, however. Geekbench scores for the S6 are pretty much on par with other devices in its price range. The single core CPU test yielded a result of 563, while the multi core test came back with 1591. The render script score was 965, and the battery test was 2349. In my experience, I found the S6 performed reasonably well during everyday use. Some larger apps like YouTube took a few seconds to load, however, once the app was up and running, I didn't have any issues. I was able to play games like Asphalt, however, I ran into an issue with the controls. My preferred way to play is to steer by tapping on the screen. For some reason, I could not get the X6 to work with that control setup, so I had to use the default gyroscope controls. If anyone knows why that happened, let me know in the comments. The rear camera on the S6 is decent, it picks up sufficient detail for social media. Color saturation was a bit washed out, but it's nothing that a little post-processing wouldn't fix. As is the case with many devices in this price range, the dual camera is fake. The bokeh effect is non-existent. 
Instead, the phone tries to pull the wool over your eyes by indiscriminately blurring the edges of your photos. I really wish manufacturers would stop doing this and just focus on including a halfway decent shooter. I have a link to a gallery of photo samples in the description below if you're curious. Overall, the Blackview S6 feels nice in the hand, and at first glance, looks more expensive than it actually is. However, once you start using the device on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll see that it's nothing to cry home about. I wouldn't go as far as saying that Blackview has simply polished a turd. However, they have tried to dress up a middle-of-the-road budget device with premium features. That's going to do it for this week's episode. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to leave me some feedback, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you all next week with another video. This is Gizmo Joe, signing off.